Struggled with that one. A little bit. Not a great pop. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game. You can find us on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We're going to keep rolling with this rookie mock it up before you fuck it up. The commission's coming up. <laughs> Big Co's now on the clock picking for... Oh, it's not Big Co's pick. It's Casey's pick. Wrong. Back. At IMC Myers. Picking for Dalvin and the Chipmunks. What do you got? Well... In the two nine hole here, uh, Dalvin and the Chipmunks selected Royce Freeman in the first round. So looks like you might need a little receiver help here. He's got Corey Coleman, who, you know, I still don't dislike Corey Coleman by any means. Hasn't stayed healthy. He's been on a bad team. Hope he gets traded. He's got Cooper Cup, which not upset about that at all. Mm, uh, Cooper Cup. Torrey Smith, which, you know. He'll be startable, but you don't know what week. <laughs> true, true. Um, <laughs> Perennially disrespected Demarius, Demarius Thomas. Demarius Thomas on here. He's got Mike Wallace, similar to Torrey Smith. You probably be startable at some point, but you don't know when. Um, and then Kendall Wright, who is on the Bears, which is kind of interesting. He's going to probably be running the slot for them, so not the worst uh, player to be rolled over onto your team here. Uh, and then he's got. Did you say the Bears, Kendall Wright will move to the, the Vikings. To the Vikings, sorry. Yeah much better situation well maybe yeah i trust the quarterback more yeah i like him over there i think he could get some targets they're giving treadwell some run right now but that's probably not gonna last right but it's a good stab at the end of your bench here not that i'm yeah unfortunately he's got too many bench wide receivers near where (laughs) right near where he needs that was the moral of the story i was getting to too many guys on the bench sure cooper cup and demarius thomas is most likely starters right now waiting on Corey coleman to come alive and stay healthy so yeah he needs some wide receiver help so i took i took a shot on trey quan smith here who is probably in most circles probably just the next pick in line after all these other guys have fallen off the board Chunk. maybe maybe outside of baker mayfield maybe some people aren't taking quarterbacks till the second or maybe a little a little later in the second or maybe the third but sometimes they get mixed in like last year i know i think mahomes and watson went in the second round of yeah, this draft they did yeah um, they did and at so, the time i was saying what, what are an you doing? idiot yeah <laughs> no i was like i was mad because i wanted deshaun but i couldn't get him so I took a shot on Traquan. He's obviously with the Saints. So he was a he was a player that blew up the combine and played did perform well there. And then you know he was decent stats on the year. He's more of like kind of a little bit of a big play kind of guy. Not not super agile. Um, bad three cone drill. Bad three cone drill. Um, but fast in a straight line. He does. He'll jump up in the air and uh, and go grab that ball. Jason likes to say he's a he's a levitator. He will, Actually, uh, it was 6.97 seconds, so oh, sub-7. So good good three cones. I was thinking of the wrong three cone drill. What am I doing? It was a bad bad overall. I, the agility isn't he my is favorite. A, but he is a levitator. You're right. Right. He's got a ridiculous broad invert, and he just hangs up in the air with the greatest of ease. Right. Um, and obviously, the biggest attractor here is that he's on the Saints, mm-hmm. and that just extrapolated everyone's uh, love for this guy. And that's, that's not, certainly not a bad stab, I think. For the most part, this is mostly who I'm taking next after sure. the, these receivers and all the running backs fall off. Is I don't mind taking a shot on Traquan. He played well. He averaged, um, you know, 13.9 yards a catch, 15.0 yards a catch, and 19.8 yards a catch in, you know, succeeding seasons here, um, and stayed around the same amount of receptions. So interesting. Uh, yeah, continue to grow downfield. Can, yeah. So sure, but. The reason people like this so much is that he's on the Saints and it's a prolific offense and all that other kind of stuff. I don't know how much of an impact Trey Quan's going to have, a, you know, year one. Seems like a probably a pretty settled receiving core at this point in time. And then you add in the backs catching balls over there in, in New Orleans. And, you know, they they, they went and s- s- uh, stole, stole Cameron, Cameron Meredith, Meredith from the Bears. So, and I, I like Cam Meredith as a, as a player. I think he's going to be a really – you can move him all over the place. Right. Uh, I think he's going to be a real solid player for Drew Brees. Got a Swiss Army knife there who's big and pretty fast. Um, and then you have, the, you know, a top 10 receiver in the league. and uh, Mike Thomas. And, Mike, and the good Michael Thomas. The I guess that Michael would be the Thomas. bad Michael Thomas. Nobody but. even knows who the other Michael Thomas is. <laughs> let's be honest. And then Ted Ginn is still holding down your kind of big play kind of role here. Yeah. Which... They they're not they can't get rid of him. He's on the team for the next they two paid years. Him a fair I mean, they probably could cut him. He's not going to get cut this year though, and 
he kind of fills that role that I would see Traquan maybe coming in the first year and you'd like to see him maybe just be that big play guy every once in a while to see him kind of grow and develop. And I just, I don't know when he gets on the field for the Saints. I'm not saying he's not going to be on the field at all. Sure. He'll probably get some run here and there and injuries happen. But to be as excited as people are that he went to the Saints, Drew Brees is 40. He could easily play zero years with st- as a starter with Drew Brees. That's a good point. I think... Uh you know, you got to look at the last couple years of between Michael Thomas and obviously Alvin Kamara of just absolutely hammering home the draft picks in two years in a row and taking a Traquan Smith in the third round makes you say, hmm. And Some but draft yes, capital the, there. When we've we've been on the show, we've been on this, you know, on the airways for a couple years now, talking about how Drew Brees didn't get any younger, and that's that's not newsflash, um, you know. But say if Drew Brees does hang around a year or two. I like the pick for this spot that Casey's making it two nine. Are we at two nine here? Yeah, you two know, nine. like you're basically just like I just took Lamar Jackson or I argued Lamar Jackson over Baker Millfield at two eight. Once you get past the Gasecki and the mm-hmm. wide receivers and the Anthony Millers and the James Washingtons, this is this is yeah. stab time anyway. And for the so most like part. I like that Jay I like that Casey made the pick and then said, Hey, Maybe potentially just see the negatives on this guy instead of just right. all the positives. Obviously, that I made the pick and I, and I right. like the guy, I like the landing spot, all that. But I just want to. I like I, that this is the guy that you picked and then said, "Don't get too caught up in the hype train because the not. hype train's great." And I will tell you, uh, I um, I was listening to the um, the podcast this week with Rich Rebar. He was sitting in with Sigmund Bloom on the couch this week, and they were talking about Traquan Smith for a minute and the, his catch rate on that nineteen point yard, nineteen y- yards a catch average was ridiculous. So he is a, a, a you know a higher end deep threat kind of player coming out of college, and now you get to play with Drew Brees. It's great. But what Casey was just saying, we we got a team where we were just kind of. I was trying to discount what Ted Ginn, Ginn did last year, and Casey read me off his stat line. And it's like well, it's it's, just, it is a league with weird scoring. It is somewhat. weird scoring, but still, it's still they reward sneaky. big plays a good bit. Okay, so but, but still sneaky, sneaky good for the Saints if nothing else. Right. Just like sneaky good, and you know, he I'm was, not saying pull your hair out in a regular league because there right. was weeks where he was really good, and then other weeks where it wasn't obviously much, but. ted getting better on a best ball roster than a, when you got to start him and not start him but what he plays a role for the saints that would probably be the same he's role probably safe in that, that role would smith say. would like to come in and he's play. a professional he's been around since 2007 he knows what he's doing he's got a year with breeze breeze he knows what he wants he knows where he wants to be now maybe trey Quan smith is just that damn good yeah and, and they and can't keep him off the field but i mean he's I I, like 32 so he's getting a little up yeah up there and that's so but that's it, real it, quick it, go ahead you know everyone loves the saints and especially the receivers, and obviously Michael Thomas gets his, and the other receivers mix in and all that. And it isn't the same Saints, or at least it wasn't the same Saints as it was last year, where exactly. there's a million attempts to go around, and Drew Brees is the best quarterback in the league. Yeah. Drew Brees is awesome. This, this uh, system is awesome. Drew Brees is still Drew Brees. He's efficient. He knows how to move the ball, keep the ball going, score points, but it's not the just barrage barrage of just yeah. we're just going to play offense and have to score 50 points a game here exactly. we got a defense all exactly. of a sudden we're trying to run it a little more and play balanced ball uh, so j- well, just again not as much volume this time last year we were talking about the saints and the potential for the quarterback to be gone the potential for the co- head coach to be gone because they had had a couple years where they only played offense didn't play defense didn't win a lot of games but then last year in 2017 they came to life their defense was here hit a couple of good rat draft picks on the defensive side of the ball as well as the offensive side of the ball like I just talked about and now all of a sudden looks like the ship is very stable for the Saints other than the fact that Drew Brees is 40 years old if Drew Brees could turn back the clock and go back to 35 the Saints would be like hey I'm we're looking for Super Bowl they were almost in the Super Bowl if it wasn't if for they Diggs. could turn it back to 35 you know? Traquan Smith would be right so if it if, if Diggs picks. doesn't if sure, Diggs sure. doesn't make that catch and or the guy doesn't fly underneath him and not make the tackle the Saints are in the Super Bowl not, not the Vikings yeah, or, or in the NFC Championship, right, right, you know right, what I mean. Right, so yeah. they they were knocking on the door of just being on the more of a national stage as a team last year. So I I like the pick a lot. I like that Casey said, "Hey, just pump the brakes a little bit because of the situation." The fact is, there's a good is a bittersweet situation. If the Saints are drafting you in the third round, and you were probably sure. talked about maybe not even being as as a third round talent, that's great. Yeah. But the Saints just draft, you know, so maybe it's a little. Temper expectations, but it, yeah. in, the, in the end of the second round, grab him and yeah. see what happens. You I don't like, want to miss the boat. If you have a chance at 2-9 or 2-8 to get Traquan Smith, you don't want to be yeah. missing the boat. I like the talent level. He's good enough. I've seen 
big plays from him that that could very well translate to the next level. Wasn't my favorite player. I actually like Deion Kane more than him on film. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this is before but, well, you but, made this pick before Drew before Andrew Luck started throwing footballs. This is true. And <laughs> and you know, Trey went footballs. a little higher and he's on the Saints and it's safe and all that kind of stuff. I like the landing spot. I just don't know how much run he gets to be actually contributing to your squad this year. Right. And I would I'd second that because because of the aggression that he went out and got Cam Meredith and all of these other weapons. Like and he's just still a rookie wide receiver. So yeah. that's a tough uphill battle. But I do like the pick. I, I, I like this guy a fair amount to, to kind of break him down. I think he's he's the pros would be he's pretty solid after the catch. Um, they handed it off to him a, a little bit. Um, he's he's a good ball tracker when that ball's in the air. He's a pretty good center fielder. I already mentioned the fact that he can he can go up and just hang in the air, and I think he's got pretty good body control. He makes good adjustments on balls behind him or outside of his frame. He's not the most consistent contested catcher. I think the hands are just okay. Um, he definitely had some drops. Big Code just said a good catch rate. I don't know. Great catch rate. Ridiculously. Traquan? Se- like 70% catch rate on a 90% a 19 yard per catch average is hmm. ridiculously good last year. I got some drops in my notes. So you mean you might have seen some drops. Yeah, fair enough. And you, you don't get to film, watch every game, drops, you know. Yeah. Um, but it seemed like it was a fairly limited route tree. Uh, it wasn't a ton of routes being ran, but I did like the little subtleties. He kind of varies his speed from time to time. He's got a solid little head lean to get defenders a little bit off balance. I do think he has the necessary tools to play at this next level. I, I do think there's going to be some work to be done to get to that, to achieve it. Yeah. Um, but he's going to have some time there. The problem is, is that the Saints offense is probably not going to be the same offense it is by the time he gets ready to see playing time. But he's also a pretty solid blocker. So Yeah. I can see. I mean, why, any, you know. injuries happen. Ted, like you said, Ted Ginn's old. He could have a hammy, and he could get exactly. on the field. Yeah. Good yep. point. Good point. Well, but just like what Jay, Jay Wayne just said, you didn't see a lot of route tree. If you got, if you only got fifty something catches, and you're averaging nineteen yard a catch, you go in one direction, straight yeah. up the field. Any they right. had, UCF had a great quarterback. Mackenzie Melton is one of my favorite quarterbacks that's left in college football right now. I, th- I think he's a, a a gamer. I love the way he delivers his ball. I think he's one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch play right now. And before we get out of here on this pick. Drew Brees, since he joined the Saints, has been six five fifty four attempts in two thousand six. His first year getting skull, and then it was six fifty two, six thirty five, five fourteen, and fifteen games. So he missed a game there. Six fifty eight, six fifty seven, six seventy, six fifty, six sixty, six twenty seven, six seventy three in two thousand sixteen, and then in two thousand seventeen, five thirty six. So down over a hundred on average attempts per season, which is exactly what Casey was just saying. They played some defense and they ran the ball a lot more. And they got Alvin Kamara. And you know Michael Mark- Thomas is getting at least 125 of those attempts. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, then exactly. The, then, the, then the running backs, there's probably another 100 over there. Exactly. More the, than 100, the, yeah. The team, the team has led the league. Alvin Kamara got 100 targets by himself. That's not going down this year. Michael Thomas got 149 targets last year. That ain't going down this year. Ted Ginn got 70. So there, if and, and Mark Ingram got 71. He's missing some time. And then they bring in... Um, Marquis or uh, what's his name from the Bears? Cameron Meredith. Cameron Meredith. So if Cameron Meredith is healthy, Traquan Smith's upside this year is definitely limited if Ted Ginn doesn't get hurt. If t- Cameron Meredith and they all the signs are positive about more uh, about Cameron Meredith's knee, everybody's saying he's looking good and he's ahead of schedule and all that good stuff. And that, you want to hear ahead of schedule because if you don't say that, you're behind schedule. That's what they like. That's what they say. So if you're not ahead of schedule, you're behind. So. If Cameron Meredith continues to come around and he's out there doing his thing, it's been a long time too. It was like right preseason, preseason injury. So, but it was a bad injury for for. for it wasn't as bad as it originally. Like he only had one. He only had an ACL. Oh, that's what that's right. They said it looked. It might it might have been really bad, and then when they got in there, it wasn't that bad. So yeah, so Trey Quan Smith without a Ted Ginner injury or just straight up outplays him. But you're like, it's if he does outplay him, it's hard to put the veteran on the bench to. He knows the system, right? Like Ted Ginn's been in the. And he knows his role. Like that's what what he's doing. So it's it's hard to say that Trey that Trey Quan's going to come in here and score right away. I like a third round pick receiver for the Saints, but just temper expectations. Take the swing because Ted Ginn could definitely. You know, be riding the pine with a hamstring injury or something, and Traquan go in there and get some passes from Drew Brees.